Yo, what is going on today, YouTube? Hope you guys are doing fantastic. Patch 11.4 just dropped the notes last Thursday or last Wednesday or something like that. But we were able to play PTS this weekend. I got a few games in. Now I've got some opinions coming into this patch day tomorrow. This is coming out on Monday. Patch comes out tomorrow. I wanted to do it today and not tomorrow because I don't want it to come out after and I don't want to make it go live at 8 o'clock when the patch goes live. So you guys can actually understand the stuff, see the stuff, and then apply it tomorrow. But patch is tomorrow. Not today, so you have another 24 hours before. I just want to go over five things that I've noticed from this patch that I think will change the game. Maybe not drastically, but enough that I want to talk about it. Also, I, I forgot to add something in, but if you guys want to pre-order the Smite 2 Founders Pack, they are now available for purchase over on the Nexus Store. My Nexus Store is... What do I think about here, Mario? It looks pretty good over here. It's right here. Uh, the link will be in the description down below also, but for the Smite 2 Founders Pack, you can get all three, I assume... So I've got five things. Let's start with number one. Number one, very easy, obvious one to start with, the new items. Now I had a chance to try out both of these items and one was mind-blowingly OP and the other might be one of the worst items in the entire game. And now that you have your idea in your mind of which one is which, let me spoil for you what it is the answer. Stormseeker's just so bad. I spent so many games trying to get it to work and the one game I got it to feel okay was a 40-minute banger where I played it Izanami. I went this item first, and I just tried to get as many sacks as possible no matter how many times I could die. I ended up getting up to 400. But even then, I didn't feel like I was doing that much. And that's kind of the issue with this item. First off, it's a perma-stacking item, but it's something you don't really stack up that great early game. And then the farther into the game you go, less autos you're really hitting to actually kill people. In a world where you're actually building this item and it's actually good, this is best on gods that have very low damage so they can consistently do damage and consistently do auto attacks and not gods that want to try to just one shot as quick as possible. So in theory, an item like Stormseeker would be best on solo laners like Bologna, Erlang, Osiris, where they just want to auto attack as many times as possible. And maybe that's a possibility of, of where it is played if it does get played. But I can at least attest to in duo lane, Stormseeker, or on Hunters, Stormseeker is not a good option. Feel free to try it out. I'm not telling you don't use it. I'm not telling you how to live your life. I'm just saying the item, not great. On the other hand, Equinox. Surely I can come up with a joke off of this. Equinox is not happening twice a year. It's happening two times a game because there should be at least two Equinoxes on both teams every game. Oh yeah, this item is just absolutely busted. Stats are good. Not phenomenal, but the passive is... So incredible. Healing from the front, damage from the back, doubles against an enemy do uh, an enemy god. It is a very strong item on mostly warriors. This item is going to be fine on assassins, but I think warriors are going to truly dominate with this item. Cyrus's, Bologna's, Erlang's, Vomana is a character that I had a lot of success, success with. This, this item is going to be pretty problematic, at least. I would not be surprised if it is shipped with a nerf, and if it is, then we'll talk about it again. But as is, learn the item. Love the item, understand the item. Equinox is just so incredible. The next thing I want to talk about is the Bull Demon. The Bull Demon is now taking the spot of Fire Giant from 2 minutes to 15 minutes. At 15 minutes, it disappears and the Fire Giant spawns in. So Fire no longer spawns at 10. It is now at 15. But what do you get from the Bull Demon? Well, from the Bull Demon, you get gold, XP, and you get Bull Demon Sight, revealing all enemy wards on the map for the duration of the buff, making them killable. That is... Insane. Not just the gold, not just the XP, and not that it just respawns every two minutes. So this is something you can get at two minutes, you can get at four minutes, you can get at six minutes, eight minutes, ten minutes, twelve minutes, fourteen minutes. If you min-max it correctly and it actually just are there to destroy it. If you play this correctly, you are able to get seven Bull Demon Kings. And in those seven Bull Demon Kings, you will get 60 seconds to destroy all enemy wards. That means ADC, solo lane, are now very easily gankable. And you're also going to be getting 50 gold to 100 gold each, and, and this scales up and ramps up the longer the game goes on. But this is an incredible amount of gold, an incredible amount of XP, and this is something that you will have to fight on. So this is something you have to pay attention to. And I think this personally makes solo lane even more, it becomes even more focused in the other game, which is, I think, is good. I think solo lane has become a little in the backseat, don't worry about it too much. Go to dual lane, play dual lane, maybe get his blue buff, and that's about it. This makes it so solo is probably the most important role in the early game because at least duo can scale into the late game. A lot of times your solo laner isn't doing that. And comboed with something else I'm going to talk about later, this is going to make it so 
you're going to see lane dominant solo laners and early game junglers and potentially even early game dominant or rotating mid laners also. So I'm excited to see how solo lane is going to play out, but do not be afraid to start picking some dominant warriors again. And going into number three, something that I want to talk about before kind of tying a bow on this early game, late game thing. Three items got changes that I want to talk about. Number one, bobble. This item is just not useful anymore. I think 450 gold seems like a whole lot. I don't think the item was that good beforehand. I thought it was balanced. The problem is now is it's just never worth it. Would you rather get that 50% cooldown and put an extra 500 gold almost towards it? Or would you rather just get that extra tank item, that mantle, that spirits robe, or get that extra percent pen or that reaver or whatever it is? Bobble is uh, staying behind drastically now. Conduit gem. Guardians are no longer going to be able to out clear in solo lane. So... Warriors are back in solo lane, in my opinion. Maybe Cthulhu, because while he doesn't really have bad early game, it's not really dominant, because Conduit kind of gave him a lot of that strength. But most other Guardians are going to be just too weak early game, and you're not going to be able to fight over there if you don't pick a Warrior. So I expect a lot of Warriors over in solo lane, and less Guardians with this Conduit and the Bull Demon changes. And then lastly, I want to talk about Gem of Iso, because this is a 2.5 second cooldown now. There are bunch of abilities in the game that now last longer than 2.5 seconds and this can double proc on abilities didact is is a smite player he's a viewer sometimes in my twitch chat and this is a 2.5 second cooldown all the yada 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 and this can apply multiple times on the same ability so agnion is 234 opwash 34 anubis 14 all of these abilities can now proc Gem of Iso multiple times on just one ability. Try it. Okay, don't, maybe not on this one. Probably not on Scylla. There's a sum that you're not going to want to try it. Scylla, Soul, probably not. But like Poseidon, 2-3, both can now proc that. And it's only 2.5 seconds. Kepri 2 with this Gem of Iso is going to be rather insane. Fafnir, 1 and 4. Tiamat, 4C. Charon 1 is now going to be very good with it also because it's also slow on top of it. There's a lot of different abilities that are now going to be very interesting and there's a bunch of different abilities that you're going to have to try out. Gods you're going to have to try out with Gem of Iso. I'll say the tech right now. Jean Kui was good with Gem of Iso before this change. Now after its buff, I'm not going to give you guys the answer. I'm just going to spell it out for you and let you guys put the answer down. But think about it. Moving on to the fourth point. We're going back. or Not back. We're going to duo lane. The changes to Nagas and the changes to the shield buff. Nagas are now 55 gold and 90 XP. The shield buff is now reduced by 10, and the shield buff's small guards have been removed, leaving only the scorpion. The thing that I see now with Naga and shield buff, there's a trade that should happen here between the Naga and the shield buff now. You have pressure, you play for shield buff, you get that shield buff, and you try to defend the enemy from going for the Naga. But if you don't have pressure, trading Naga for shield buff is not bad anymore. It used to be really bad, because they would have better stats, and they would be getting more farm. Now it's a bit more of a trade where, yeah, they're getting the stats. We're almost equal in farm now, too, excluding, like, kind of, like, the stats that they're getting. This is not a bad trade for us. This doesn't put us behind anymore. So now in duo, from what I'm seeing, less pressure mattering over there. In solo, a lot more pressure mattering over there. And in mid, more pressure is mattering there. Don't be surprised if you see a lot of Jing Wei's, a lot of losing solo laners, Artemis, I mean, sorry, Losing duo laners, Artemis played more in duo and a lot more pressure picked in solo and mid. But with that, can never forget, you can still stomp lane if you're invading every single purple buff. I'm just saying, it's going to be a little bit harder to do that because there's less farm to you actually kind of manipulate and dominate with. So keep that in mind. But what I'm seeing, solo lane's becoming a lot more important. Duo lane's becoming a lot less important. And the last thing I have to say is this massive, massive list of changes at the end. I would recommend... After you pick your god in your ranked game, as soon as the patch drops, you've waited for safe mode, you're 30 minutes deep, check this list to make sure none of your abilities have changed. Because it might not feel big, but when you first use that ability after it's changed, it's like a whole new world. Is that Aladdin? Yes! Banger movie. Try to look at the gods that you have picked. Try to find them in here. If there's an ability that changes, look at that ability and be like, okay, well now there's going to be something different with this. And try it out. See how much different it feels. There's a lot of changes here, and most of the time it is for the better. But yeah, that is the five things. This is number five. Checking out all of these. You can also maybe pause it during this if you want. If you don't want to pull up the 
entire patch notes. Those are the five biggest things, in my opinion, to pay attention to for next patch, which is going to be tomorrow. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I'll see you guys again next time. Peace.